Our goal is to produce a new major movie, the true story of a young Native American woman, and you can make it happen. We invite you to join us and catch the Bright Eyes 2020 vision. Dwali umalika ano dwam umahan yashingam dwali umajong gri dwali nishura etashe estigri we umahan yashingam omri dwali majong etashe ida for hundreds of years the Omaha have lived on this land by the Missouri River I am Omaha and grew up on the Omaha reservation Bright Eyes. I am so honored to portray you in our new movie. I know you weren't seeking fame. You just wanted to save your people. But I think people need to know your story. I just wonder how many people know who you were. Hi, Sarah. We were just at Bright Eyes' gravesite, and we overheard you as you thought about who actually knew who Bright Eyes was. And I grew up here, and I didn't really know who Bright Eyes was. Really? That's actually pretty sad. Well, the irony is, is that if it wasn't for her, We'd be living in Oklahoma or somewhere, where the rest of the Ponco were forced to go. Yeah, I've learned so much about her in the last few months. I'd like to hear what you learned. Sure. Bright Eyes was a voice for all natives, explaining the injustices we endured and were suffering. She helped make happen the landmark court case of Standing Bear versus General George Crook where an Indian was first considered to be a person with legal rights. And after the court case, Bright Eyes and Standing Bear then traveled to the East Coast and spoke out for justice. She met with famous people like Louisa May Alcott, who wrote Little Women, and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Even though he was the first internationally acclaimed poet of the United States, he said this about Bright Eyes. I have been a student of the English language for all my life and I would give all I possess if I could speak with the simplicity, fluency, and force used by this Indian girl. And during the time she met with Longfellow in Boston, she became the first woman, the first woman ever allowed to speak at Faneuil Hall, which was known as the Cradle of Liberty. She gave an impressive speech about the need for liberty for natives. I also learned that she spoke before Congress, met with President Rutherford B. Hayes, and she was even at Wounded Knee. She was there as reporter and helped the wounded and dying. Hi, and we're back at the Missouri River. And you know, the more I learned about her, <laughs> she was a lot like Forrest Gump. She was everywhere. And she changed the world for good. She showed that one life can make a big difference. And now that more people know about her, it's time to let people know how they could help make this feature film happen. It's time to introduce our writer and producer, Mr. Derry Thompson. Thank you, Sarah. You know, it's been an amazing experience working on producing the movie Bright Eyes and writing the screenplay. It's been a long journey for me. Uh, I was a publicity director for the Native American film Wind Walker back in 1981. That's where I first heard about Bright Eyes. And then I made some uh, documentaries, some other films. Then in 2016, I thought it was time pursue this project. I sought the blessing of the Omaha tribe, so I traveled to Omaha to seek their acceptance and, and their support for this movie. I come to you today with a message. First of all, Jerry Thompson came to our people. He came to us with honor and respect. He came to us with this vision of this project on his mind, and he shared it with our leadership. Our leadership were excited to be a part of this project 
as it focuses on one of our historical elders, our relatives. I met Jerry Thompson over 25 years ago, and up until this present day, I've always been impressed with how he wants this project Bright Eyes to be about Native people, from a Native person's point of view, where the Natives are the heroes, and he wants everything done with respect, and that's where he's brought me in to show how things can be made and how they should be made and how everything should be done correctly. So there's no such thing as a generic Native American in this film. They'll either be Ponca or they'll be Omaha or they'll be Osage or whatever, but they'll be the tribes they're supposed to be and it'll look right and correct. And that's how I show my respect to the old people and the ancestors, by doing it right. And that's what I want to help your tribe too. It makes this incredible project that people will be able to look back on in the future and it'll make your children proud and your grandchildren proud. Yeah. For some reason there's a want that is put in everybody and it's up to them to pursue it or to let it go. And I would write it in my journal that I wanted to be a lead in a movie and I don't know why it was there. Um, but I faced a lot of no's and a lot of, um, when I would audition, just a lot of not callbacks and it kind of uh, set me back. And I was wondering if that was really my path in life. And so I prayed and I asked the Creator, if this is the way that you want me to go, please like my path. Uh, please set my footsteps in the path that you want me to go. And I said I was giving it up to Him. and. Um, I just kind of give up at that point. Um, I received a phone call that day um, right as I was getting into cell phone service and they asked me to submit an audition. Um, so I was really surprised because I didn't send them my picture. I didn't pursue this audition and so I sent in my audition the next day. And you didn't know nothing about this project either? I knew nothing about the project. Um, but I knew that the audition, when you're asked to submit an audition, you go through, when you want something, you go through anything to get it submitted. Um, so I submitted it the next day and I actually got the part. Um, so that was my prayer was for them and that uh, there would be a, a respectful understanding for them and, and of course for our elders and our youth. And so when I was finished and as I was leaving, a bald eagle flew by here. And so, you know, like uh, a lot of our people do that, that believe and think that way, you know, it's blessed myself and, you know, I felt good. You know, this is right minutes before I went into the meeting. Wow. And that's how, and so I'm here thinking, well, this is, this is where I wanted to start to show you. This is where it started for me. Each and every one of us has a purpose, and her purpose was to help uh, push us forward. And a lot of the times I see movies about indigenous men and how they fought um, for us, but rarely do you ever hear about a woman who had the drive and the compassion and the love for her people um, to continue our, our I want to say practices, but um, somewhat keep up our way of life. And so I believe that she was instrumental in pushing that forward. How will this relate to everybody? It relates to everybody because it's going to give them a chance to tell their side of the story and then also see that what, what the Chief Standing Bear also done for them because they don't know, a lot of people don't know what he done for them. They don't know that he, by winning that, that habeas corpus written in, in Omaha, Nebraska, in federal court, I mean, that gave us so many things that we never had before. That gave us a that gave us a chance to vote for the president we want today. That gave us a chance to do so many different things and stand up without being persecuted, without being kept on a reservation. It gave us so many opportunities for education, for so many things that we have. We, you know, some people take for granted, but us as Native American people, we can't take that for granted. We have to be ready. Hello, my name is Nate Merrick, and I am a member of the Omaha tribe, and I am the great great grandson of Joseph LaFleche. Ishtamaza, Iron Eyes, the last hereditary chief of our tribe. <clears throat> His daughter was Suzette, Bright Eyes, La Flesh. Uh, she was a very well-known and renowned person of our tribe, and uh, she 
did a lot of uh, work for our nation. You know, I'm really today feel proud and fear, feel very good that uh, uh, we're, this, this movie is being made uh, because history needs to be told. We need to know about the great people of our nation. And I would like to see this movie uh, go on the big screen. And uh, thank you all for your support. With this project, Jerry also talked about his dream. Jerry's vision and our vision is to build a village, a historical village that can be looked upon as a tourist attraction after this project is complete. Jerry's plan for this is to help all the tribes across the United States with, uh, with different issues that come up within their reservations. So we ask that you help us on this worthwhile project and be a part of this for all of us. Thank you.